Eric Tov, Chavari, my name is Stephen Bernoulli. You're watching Israeli News Live. Uh, some very serious things happening, especially here near the Czech Republic, right here on the border here. Uh, Lorenzo on his uh, page already happened, uh, uh, posted this video footage here. And uh, as you can see, we are looking at German, a very long convoy. Uh, this uh, video here uh, does start early on, goes on quite a ways there, showing all types of uh, heavy uh, track type of equipment from Germany coming inside of uh, uh, the Czech Republic. I, was, I assume it's headed to Poland, but I have no idea for sure exactly where it's actually going. Uh, but this convoy, though it was spread out, was quite lengthy. And again, you are looking at uh, different types of uh, tracked equipment, armor personnel carriers, uh, howitzers, etc., coming through the Czech Republic uh, there to an unknown destination. Very concerning to me uh, in light of the tensions that continue to build here in Europe uh, with Russia. No end in sight there and even though President Trump uh, has vowed to try to work with Russia against ISIS at the same time there is a buildup of both countries uh, uh, when I say both countries the United States uh, sending in its own forces as well as Russia building up uh, uh, and it's on its own border because the fear of NATO and the buildup that NATO has been doing on its border. Of course NATO also claiming that Russia is the threat uh, although I cannot necessarily agree with that, but I do, I, I can't understand at this point here uh, that one of the major concerns that NATO has, and that would be including Germany, Poland, Lithu Lithuania, Latvia, and Estonia, is the fact that Russia has put the Eichlander M missiles in Kaliningrad. Those are nuclear capable missiles. Uh, now, no doubt uh, President Putin did this in response to the continual uh, buildup of NATO forces on his own borders, uh, breaking all the different uh, treaties that, uh, that had been signed between uh, the former Soviet Union uh, at, the, at the collapse of the Soviet Union with Russia, uh, the agreements that they had uh, made there on not bringing these types of weapons on Russia's border. So uh, the U.S. under Barack Obama changed all that, and of course, that's what got all these tensions really building up. And then, of course, the Obama administration also had caused the Maidan, the collapse of Ukraine, uh, uh, the collapse of the, uh, the legal government under Yukonovich, and then that kind of spiraled out of control, but later it was blamed on Russia, and it continued through the Western media propaganda machine uh, has continued to be blamed on Russia. But nonetheless, if we want to stop, take a look back at everything, now both sides are building up, both sides, no, none of the sides are defusing the situation, uh, but what would happen if NATO built up and Russia didn't build up? Then would Russia uh, face the fear of being invaded by NATO? I can't really say which is the, tr the correct answer in that case there, but it does uh, lend for some very serious uh, thinking about uh, this article right here, uh, this was on uh, one of Russia's uh, uh, websites here that, that came out back in December. But I wanted to bring this to your attention because as NATO identified the possible point of the outbreak of war with Russia, and of course it is Kaliningrad. That is something that we have uh, speculated on as well since the uh, uh, Eichlander missiles were brought in there. And the fact that Kaliningrad is just a little bitty small piece of land uh, surrounded by Poland to the south, Lithuania to the east there, and of course the Baltic Sea to the west. Uh, but this is also where Russia has built up a tremendous amount of forces, including the nuclear-capable missiles, and as well in Belarusia, which is uh, just to the southeast there of this area. Um, and so in this article here that was brought out on the Russian news here, they are actually quoting in here where it is believed that uh, NATO is expecting that Kaliningrad will be the Gibraltar of the Baltic, uh, so to speak there, and that this will be the true, really, really bad place, uh, uh, you might say, when it comes to wars. I want to take you over here to Google Maps, though, just so we can get a quick uh, look at what we're talking about here, uh, zooming out from where we are here in Prague. And let's take a look here. We're, we're, we can see Germany to our west and to a little bit to our north. We have Poland on our northeast corner of the country of the Czech Republic. And then we go right over here as we're looking into the Baltic Sea to the north there of Poland and Kaliningrad being this little area right here on your screen here. This is Kaliningrad and of course Belarus. Now we know that Russia is bringing in 
uh, for the Zapod exercise, uh, could we could expect to see as it was last year about 120,000 troops there. Now NATO has a major force from Estonia here to the north, Latvia, Lithuania, and Poland especially right now. A monstrosity of a force. This is probably one of the reasons why we see the German tanks and stuff crossing uh, the uh, crossing the Czech Republic, is they're building up in preparation for Russia's huge military drill here in Belarus. Now the contention is, even according to this article, is this little strait of land here that goes from Kaliningrad uh, through Lithuania here. And that if there is any type of war, if Russia were to launch a first strike scenario, that's what Russia is going to focus on is that land that links Kaliningrad back to Belarus because Belarus is a strong ally of Russia. So Russia would you know, feel comfortable with Belarus right there. Now, Belarus though, if you want to take another look here, Belarus is on the north side of Ukraine. So effectively, with Belarus being here, Russia being here, everything from the north side of Ukraine and of course to the east of Ukraine, if Russia were to get into a war with Ukraine, uh, they have that advantage there. But to the south, as uh, we know, the U.S. is also building up with Moldova. Moldova, by the way, only has 5,000 soldiers in their military, but they are getting a huge facelift on military equipment. Romania, the United States has brought in a lot of firepower into Romania. Again, um, that's so that they can deal with Crimea, if they feel like they're going to have to battle with Crimea, and as well as if they have to fight any war uh, with Russia over here because of the east of, uh, of Ukraine there. Now, keep in mind, one thing that's concerning me about whether or not war could end up breaking out in the near future is because recently the whole Donbass region, which is all of this part here to the east of Ukraine that has declared its independence, the Donetsk, Luhansk, the Donetsk and Luhansk People's Republic, as they have called themselves there, uh, Russia is now accepting their passports, etc., and effectively has taken the first step is also like Crimea and it's going to end up becoming its own republic. Uh, we know that this region here is also now working uh, with Russia to sell the coal supplies because Kiev under Petro Poroshenko put a blockade. They wouldn't accept the coal. Uh, they, they don't want it from there any longer. So now the steps are being made and of course if that were to happen that region there the whole Donbass region there is about the size of Crimea. Uh, so <clears throat> who knows what's going to happen there, uh, you know, but th nonetheless, Ukraine under Petro Poroshenko is determined to take back that whole eastern section there. And of course, if anything like that were to happen, then Russia is going to get involved uh, because we have the U.S. over here in Romania, Moldova, there, you know, you have uh, Crimea there. And of course, again, we have the, the Gibraltar Straits, as they call it here, what they're expecting the war to, to start at would be Kaliningrad. Uh, even though NATO would not have much of a problem in taking Kaliningrad from Russia, uh, other than the fact if Russia is built up here in Belarus. And this could be one of the reasons why Russia is planning on doing a drill right now with all this military equipment here. Russia may be expecting that something is about to happen to Kaliningrad. Uh, and I wouldn't doubt it because uh, Poland, po uh, France, uh, Germany, they all are feeling threatened by Kaliningrad because of the Eichlander missiles. So it's really a major issue and I think when Russia put the nuclear uh, missiles there, I don't think that was a smart move at all. I understand why Russia did it. They did it for their tit for tat, but that was pretty provocative to put nuclear capable missiles there. So it's really going to make this whole area a hotbed if any kind of war broke out, Poland, Lithuania, Latvia, Estonia, Mos all the way to Moscow, St. Petersburg, the whole place is just going to go up in flames. Not to mention nukes are probably going to go off back and forth uh, if they don't just fight a conventional war there. And uh, I don't, I know they say that the, the nukes could reach all the way to Paris, if I'm not mistaking on that, which if that be the case from Kaliningrad, they could possibly reach London as well. Not really sure on how that goes. Another thing, though, that's going on here. This is a Russian article here, and by the uh, the title here in Russian, uh, this is something that might catch everybody by surprise here, and they might not think that much of it. If you'll notice on your screen here, 
I'll kind of blow this image up for you so you can see this a little bit better here. We have the Mexican flag here. We're looking at Mexico. But what is Russia doing? What is the article speaking about Russia sending down to Mexico on loan? A whole bunch of vehicles here uh, that are, that is this one right here, this particular vehicle here, it's an armored vehicle that they're letting them try out. A military style vehicle, armored vehicle that the Mexican government is trying out. Now, that may not seem like that big of a deal, but I'm starting to wonder myself.